Okay, so now we are going to carry on with the roughing out of the profile. So we're going to use dynamic milling. Dynamic milling, we use the full length of the um, tool. Um, if you're going to use high speed steel uh, tool bit, or if you've got a solid carbide end mill that's long enough, so we'll use a high speed steel roughing end mill because that's what we have. So we are going to select avoidance regions. That'll be that part of the part. We are machining from the outside and we can preview the chain to see where it's going to cut. Happy with that. The tool will be a one inch end mill. Um, we can go with it's high speed steel so we'll go with 400 surface feet per minute. Um, tooth upper tooth is probably okay. This is a one inch roughing end mill. Cut parameters will be next. We're going to leave 20 thou on the walls. Nothing on the bottom. The step over, if we're going to use dynamic milling, must be a small amount between passes. So I'm going to go with 10% of the diameter of the, of the tool. Entry motion, that's fine. We'll just go with the default. Our linking parameters, we are going to switch everything to absolute. Clearance of 1 inch. Retract of 0.1. Feed plane point one, top of stock is zero. Depth I know is minus 1.625. The other way you could select that would be to use the depth button here and select it off of, off of the material wherever you like. It doesn't matter. You'll see it populates it with the same thing. Top of stock I could have done the same. I could have picked the top of the stock. Turn your coolant on. and it will generate the path. And you can see it's going right to the bottom depth and then it's going to do multiple cuts or, or multiple passes to rough out the stock. It's not going to go into that big pocket there. So let's see what that looks like. Just the roughing of the contour. There's our end mill. So, and we've roughed it out using our one inch end mill. <coughs> so to carry on roughing out on the inside there, I know a 5 8 cutter will fit through that that opening. So again, we're going to use dynamic and we'll go with the same thing from the outside, avoidance regions, where are we avoiding is the main body of the part. So from outside Preview the chain. Yep, that's going to be good. So let's select a tool, filter, make sure we're on end mills. Yep, we are. Select a tool. 5 8 end mill will be long enough flutes to reach the um, full thickness of that part. Uh, 400 surface feet per minute, 2,500 feet per tooth, that's okay. So now we're going to use stock. So we don't want to be machining all this air because it's already been removed. So if we use rest material, so we're going to machine the rest of the material from one other operation. And that's from our one inch tool. Our cut parameters will be climb milling. Yep, we want that. Step over. Again, we'll go with 10%. Sixty thou. We're going to leave twenty thou on the walls. Going to leave that for finishing. The uh, minimum tool path radius is the default is ten percent. We'll see if that works for us. Depth of cuts. I think we probably am going to do two depths of cuts. I'm going to go one point six two five divided by two. Hit enter. It does the math for me and don't need to worry about a finish pass on the bottom uh, entry motion that's fine linking parameters 
Yeah, it's okay. Final depth is going to be 1.625. Turn your coolant on. On. Okay, so let's see what that looks like. That looks to me like it's going to plunge down. It's going to cut out this little bit here and cut out that little bit there. So it's going to be cutting out this from from inside a closed pocket. I would prefer it to go all the way in and come back out. So if we go back into the parameters and go to cut parameters and change our step over minimum toolpath radius to 5%. And then regenerate that path. See what that looks like. Now you can see it's going all the way in there. So we got two passes at that depth. So let's select all and then go to verify. and play. Looks good to me. So that runs our roughing operation.